Hello and welcome to Oddsock Comics. Today I have a another Indiegogo review for a book that I got in the mail today. I was really excited to see it. I, I heard people were starting to receive this book uh, and so I knew that it was on its way, but I hadn't had any indication that it had shipped or not. I actually checked yesterday to see if, if it showed as fulfilled or not and on the website it said fulfilled, so I knew it was coming soon. But it arrived today and I gotta say, I, I really like this book. So this is Lone Star, Heart of the Hero uh, by, <laughs> how did I miss the name? Let me grab something. I don't wanna mess up the name. Okay, it's by Mike Miller. I wasn't sure if it was Mike Miller or Mark Miller. I've watched his videos several times on YouTube. Uh, know what the guy looks like, know how he talks, know his personality pretty well. <laughs> but I couldn't remember his name. That's just me. I'm not great with names. And I've done a really bad job of pointing out the artists and creators of the books that I'm reading. These books, you know, I, I appreciate the, the effort and the artistry that goes into them. And I'm going to try to emphasize that a little bit more uh, as, as I move forward and talk about books that I'm reading and everything. So this is by Mike M Miller. I actually don't know the names of the colorist and the letterer, but they're there on the front, uh, Jim Barry and Tortellini. Uh, I think, what did I hear? One of them is from India, and I, I don't know Tortelloni. Uh, I don't know, sounds Italian, but is, that's somebody that's local in the U.S. or somewhere else. I don't know. But he referenced that there's a little mistake on one of the American flags. They did, they colored it wrong, and that's part of that he said is because the colorist isn't American. So it's, uh, it was a, an, a, little honest mistake by somebody who doesn't have, you know, what might not be expected to recognize that. Now it's true that that's something that should be picked up in editing, but uh, you know, it's one of those little things where instead of being red stripes on the outside of the American flags, it was white stripes on the outside of the American flag. But anyway, that's a, a minor issue. The book, this is the Comics Gate Alliance cover. Uh, the art is by Mike Miller, who did all of the art in the book, and the colors are by Kyle Ritter who's a deaf colorist, and I've just been starting to watch him. He's been doing a lot of a lot more videos coloring uh, some of the art from the Comic Skate artists. He's very, very good. He's very interesting, and he's pretty funny. So <laughs> and he's a deaf guy, so he never he never talks. He does a little bit of signing, but uh, he, he uh, tweets quite a bit, and it, it, he, he's a funny guy. So uh, enjoy a lot of the artists involved with this. And as you can see down here, it, it's signed. That's fun. But this is just a cool cover. It's got Cyber Frog, uh, which I have coming as soon as that book's finished. That one's a little behind. Red Rooster by Mitch Breitweiser. I am really looking forward to that. I've been seeing some of the progress on that book. It's It looks beautiful. Mitch Breitweiser has a very specific or unique art style. Uh, it's very free-flowing lines, and I, I really, really like it. And then his wife uh, is going to be coloring it, and she's an excellent colorist. She's been doing DC books and I think some Marvel books. Uh, but I've seen a bunch of her books, and her coloring is excellent. So that's a book that I'm looking forward to. Uh, you've got Jawbreakers that I reviewed last time for Indiegogo down here. This is Lone Star. And then I don't know who this guy is, and I don't know what the horse is. I kind of remember them referenced, but they weren't uh, more books that I, I backed. So a few that are still to come, and a few that I've already got. So <coughs> first of all, let me just show what this came in and this is the this is the downside sorry i'm really close to the microphone here but this is the downside of some of these things it's a little bit of a lottery if you're going to send something in these rigid mailers rigid doesn't exactly mean what it's supposed to mean so this one as you can see looks like it's been run over by something it's got kinks on both of the sides and the, the book does have some, some damage because of that. It did have an extra sheet on the inside that gives it a little bit of extra rigidity, but uh, that wasn't quite enough to protect the book. Maybe if it hadn't had that, the book would be completely bent. Uh, so that may have helped a little bit, but these, these two dents on this rigid foam, this uh, rigid mailer did not protect the book enough. You know, you can stamp do not bend on there all you want, and it's not going to stop, stop a postal worker from bending it. Um, so this does have a little bit of damage. There's a kink right here. There's a little bit of a kink kinks over in the pages over on this side. So it did indeed push through the envelope to the book. 
which is a little bit disappointing. I mean, these are expensive books. With shipping, uh, this book was $33. Now, it's basically two fairly heavy issues, like 30, I don't know how long they are, but maybe 32 pages a piece. So it's, it's the equivalent of maybe $12 worth of standard comic books. And you gotta pay more, they're small print runs, independent artists, they, they have to pay a lot more to print them up. You know, Marvel's printing the books at, I don't know, $1.25 or whatever a piece. Uh, this is gonna cost several dollars to, to print, and you wanna support the creators. But it's really not a sustainable model to just do these Indiegogo campaigns if it's gonna be an ongoing story. I can't pay $33 for every two issues to, to keep something like this going. And I think that I even got it discounted for that price. So that's a little disappointing. Um, I hope that they figure out a better way to distribute these books because I gotta say, this book was absolutely excellent. Um, it is written in a very classic comic book style. Uh, there's a few really interesting things going on. It's written as a continuing series. So we get introductions to characters, introduces the powers, but not in like, you know, a front, not, not just in the obvious way, telling what your powers are or explaining them. It's like they set up little scenarios where everybody gets to demonstrate their powers. You know, one guy can, right here, can shape shift or whatever. Uh, another guy can heat things up. Then there's one guy, let's see, that can use like, well, missed the page there. Uh, probably farther on. Anyway, um, there, there's, you know, they, they set up their powers in kind of an independent way. There's the shapeshifter again. A couple different things that they do. There are, there's a really cool section here. So this is kind of what I view as the start of book two. Uh, so the end of book one, this is how I envisioned it. The end of book one ends with this really cool picture of these guys coming to attack the main team. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Start of book two sets up this other scene and we introduce a character. Now, the interesting thing about this is this character isn't in the rest of the book. And that feels very much like the format of comic books where you're, you're setting up stories for the long run, for a comic book. To, to me, to be a real comic book, you need to be a serial. You, you're trying to tell a story over time. That's one of the things that has drawn me into comic books, especially the new comic books. You know, Immortal Hulk and Venom have these stories that unfold slowly over time and you get deeper and deeper into them as you as you read. That's what keeps people, I think, coming to comic books. And this book is very much set up that way. So I really, really hope that it doesn't stay on Indiegogo for the ongoing series. I hope he figures out a way to get it distributed at a lower cost. You know, if it were a Patreon where you pay $20 a month and every two months you get a well, that's actually pretty steep. But <laughs> every two months you get a, an issue with a couple of, an issue this size. That would be completely acceptable to me. Uh, I, I'd be willing to pay an ongoing fee to keep this one coming. I, I would subscribe to this instantly if he got it published and it was going to be on a regular schedule to come out because the story is that good. There's, uh, you know, the characters are good. They're interesting. They're, they're deep. They don't all get along. Uh, the bad guys are interesting it's you know how in a lot of marvel books right now because they're written overwhelmingly by uh by people on the political left their enemies or their the enemies are always going to be representations of what what they see as wrong with the world so there's a lot of white supremacists that's, that's fine, that's a great enemy. I'm, I appreciate that enemy, but it's overused in almost every single comic book right now. The bad guy is, is the white supremacist. And this one being written by a conservative and by a religious conservative, you know that you're going to approach things a little bit differently. And so he sets up, first of all, the main bad guys are, are vampires, as you can see here. And then you've got kind of subtle bad guys right here that's like a group of uh, kind of uh, rich, the children of rich people that end up being socialists, kind of, you know, the coddled American. And in my experience, this is exactly what the real world looks like. You go, so I've, I've got friends all across the political spectrum. Uh, I've, I've, I know people from all over 
And I know, I know that you, some people don't want to hear politics and stories because you just want the story of comic books. But the, the reality is that everything kind of connects. And that's one of the things that drew me into comic books. So that's what I talk about. That's how I view comic books all the way around. But this, this scene right here that I just closed, because I'm not well planned right now, this scene is very, very similar to something that I've seen in real life. So if you go to, let's say Boston. Boston is a great place because it's filled with these highly educated people, especially kind of the north end of Boston. Really educated people, very, very upper middle class, uh, educated, mostly white. Uh, you do tend to have uh, people that are identify as queer and, and transgender and all those things uh, in probably a heavier dose there. And so they all, that's how they kind of have their oppression in that, that situation. But most of them up in that area, you know, these are guys that went, are going to, not so much MIT, maybe, I don't know too many people from MIT, but you've got, you've got Harvard and Boston College and all of those really high-end universities up in the north part of Boston. And uh, I don't want to say universities that I don't remember, but anyway, they're all up there. And so, so I, I was up there once and I saw a meeting of socialists and I went to look to see who had, uh, had, you know, agreed that they were going to go into the meeting. And I swear it looked exactly like this. It's a bunch of white middle class hippies, uh, hipsters, I guess now, uh, you know, they've all got the same glasses, a lot of dyed hairs and things like that, but they're all kind of middle class educated they've been in college if you go and look at like their stories they've got like their trips to mexico <laughs> and you know they're not people who are uh who are you know poor and really need to fight for their well-being they, they're truly just trying to find a cause that's what this scene is making fun of this is who how they're kind of setting up some of the ongoing bad guys of of the story and i just found it hilarious because it rang so 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 true uh you know maybe the redneck white supremacist rings true to some people. I've been in redneck areas. I even know a couple of actual, you know, racists. Don't like to say that, but they are out there. So I don't, I don't try to pretend that they're not. Um, and they're, they're rednecks. <laughs> but, like, I think that they would... I'm trying to think. Would they say that they were rednecks? I think probably. I think it's one of those things that they kind of embrace. They don't... See, this is one of those things. I, I have a lot of uh, broad experience. So it's like, yeah, I know racists and I know communists and I know uh, atheists and I know super religious people. And I've got this really broad range of, of people. And so when I, when I try to think of, okay, what does a racist look like? To me, you know, it's, it's Bubba or whatever. And I, I'm saying that because that's the kind of names they actually go by. They're the, the good old boys. Uh, they... they are they have some old habits and stuff and they they don't necessarily want they, no okay so this is where it gets bad and i'm probably going to have to edit this part out no I, I'll, I'll leave it if you want to hear this kind of stuff so these are the kind of people that honestly would not feel comfortable if somebody from another race were to move into their neighborhood they live in a neighborhood that's honestly pretty spread out they don't want people moving into their neighborhood and that's that's racism plain and simple but at the same time, these are the same guys that are working in an area with all different kinds of people. They get along great. Uh, they don't like go out and get drinks after work or anything with, with the people of other races, but they're not, there's no conflicts at work. So it's like, I have a different view. I know actual racists that nobody, I, I wouldn't hesitate to call them racist. And it's a bad worldview that I would try to talk them out of if I, if I ever had a chance at all. But they're still like not hateful people. It's not like they're you know, looking for somebody from another race to go beat up or anything, which is how it's always portrayed. So that's, that's something that's very interesting to me. Uh, this one rang true from my experience with these communist gatherings, especially in cities where it's mostly middle-class people. Uh, and a couple of the other little bits that sh popped up here. You know, I really liked that the... Uh, the main character has kind of this old-fashioned sense of, uh, of you know, they're, they're a team called the Unknown Soldiers. They all have a military background. 
this guy has an old-fashioned sense of, of values. You know, he wants to treat the girl that he's courting well. Um, and it's just a little bit different to see. There's this little romance that goes along through it, and it develops slowly and interestingly. Uh, hope that there's more to it as things go. I, I really am looking forward to reading the next books. I hope that they aren't as expensive as this one. But that's just my, I, I think I'm going to end it there. I may have rambled too much. I do tend to do that. But uh, all in all, honestly, one of the best books that I've read in the last little while. I would put this up as far as storytelling with a, with a Venom or a, an Immortal Hulk. The things that those books have that this book doesn't is this rich history of the, the canon behind them that they're pulling from. And that makes them extremely interesting. This book doesn't have it, so it's not quite that level of depth. But the storytelling is fantastic. The characterization is really good. The relationships are really good. Uh, nobody is obviously perfect in any way. So that's, it's, there's a lot of depth going on. So I, I don't know if you can get a hold of this book right now. Let me, let me take uh, two seconds to look over here. Uh, it's probably not going to let me get on. So uh, I think that it's no longer available. Um, yeah, it looks like it's, it's gone. It's, it is completely closed. Uh, so unfortunately, you can't buy this directly right now. It may be available in some shops. I bet it'll pop up in a couple of places on eBay. Uh, definitely worth reading. And I'm sure that it'll be available digitally online pretty soon for anybody to read. Uh, I'd recommend taking a look at it. If you like good comic books, uh, if you like adventure stories, that's all, all it is, just written by a conservative. And we don't see enough of that in the mainstream comic books. They're, they're fine, and they, there's a lot of good stories to be told. But I think that it would be better if it were balanced, if there were a little bit of this and a little bit of, you know, I'm trying to think Black Panther or something that's written by Ta-Nehisi Coates. Uh, that's, that's great. We need, a, we need them both. We need them all. We need to recognize that people are different and there are stories for everybody. You know, maybe Black Panther doesn't ring true with me right now, but it's fantastic if somebody else is really enjoying it. Same thing goes with this one. This one rings towards a, a, you know, more conservative ideals. Fantastic. Great. But in the meantime, it's just a great adventure story. So realistically, that's the way that I look at comic books. I like this one, want to give it a good, I mean, I would give this five stars out of five stars. I don't know if I've come up with any ratings series, but I have no complaints. I had some storytelling complaints with other Indiegogo campaigns. This is the first one that's come out that really there aren't any flaws. The only issue is it's kind of expensive. So I hope that they get that fixed. But a couple of other little bonus things that you get when you do an Indiegogo campaign and it does well, you get those little extra perks. A uh, little postcard uh, that's supposed to be styled after uh, Norman Rockwell, which I kind of liked. <laughs> and, uh, and then a little trading card that's got some stats on the back. So I, those are just fun little things that I do enjoy getting. Those will go packed in with my, my slightly damaged book. And this is one that I'll probably read again. I think that's saying something about a comic book. So, hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, let me know what you think. If you read this book, I'm curious to know what your opinion was. Uh, I'm going to go look for some other reviews on YouTube tonight and see if, if anybody has read it, see what other people think. This one is completely unbiased at this point. I opened the book today, I read it, I haven't looked at anybody else's reviews on it. And like I said, I enjoyed it as much as any book that I've got right now. So, nice job Mike Miller. Nice job to the colorist and the letters, and the cover is fantastic, so great. I appreciate it, and uh, yeah, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I'm going to keep doing these uh, Indiegogo books as they come in. I just backed another one last night, so they're still rolling in slowly. Uh, just really enjoying it. They're expensive, and that's the real downside, but uh, still happy to support some of these independent creators, especially the ones that show real talent like this. Hope that stays, keeps up. All right, again, thank you. This was Odd Sock Comics and an Indiegogo review.